Hello! Today we're going to be using Geometry Sketchpad to look at making some regular polygons. And we're going to be doing that a slightly different way than we have before. So what we're going to do is we're going to start with a regular triangle, which is usually we call it an equilateral triangle. And we're going to start with our straight edge tool and make sure that we have the segment selected. Um, we're going to start by just drawing a segment anywhere we want on the screen. And then clicking off. I'm going to actually label our initial point that we started with. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to be making a triangle with A in the middle of it, and B is going to be one of the points in our triangle. The way we're going to think about it is we're going to rotate B 360 degrees around, but we're going to stop three times, and those three times we stop are going to be our three points that make our triangle. So we're going to stop at B, we'll probably end up somewhere over here with a B prime, and the double prime will probably end up somewhere down here. And then we'll connect those, and you'll see how that will make a triangle. And our question is, will it be an equilateral triangle? And if it is, why is that? Alright, so what we're going to do is we're going to start by rotating this. But we need to know how much we're going to rotate it by. So I'm going to come over here to measure and calculate. And now I said we're going to be rotating that 360 degrees. But we're going to be stopping three times. So, that's telling us each time we're going to rotate it 120 degrees. Okay, I'm going to leave that over there, click off. Now, selecting this, we're going to have to mark our center. Good, it chose the right one, it chose A. We're going to mark, we're going to rotate this now 120 degrees around A. And we're going to do the same thing again. From there, we're going to rotate 120 degrees around A. So that's given us this point here, which is B prime, and that's our B double prime. So I click off. And now we're going to form a triangle. So the way you can do that, you could select them individually and connect the segments one by one. Or you can select all three points and then construct segments between them. Now that I have these three segments, I want to know if this makes an equilateral triangle. You can see that it makes a triangle. So for it to be equilateral, we know that each side is going to have to be equal. So I'm going to measure the length, and that gives me the length of B double prime to B, which is this one here. It gives me B to B prime, which is this one here. And it gives me B prime to B double prime, which is that one there. And sure enough, they are all the same length. So this seemed to work. Um, notice how I can move B, my initial point, and the rest of my figure, my triangle, stays the same. And notice how no matter how big I make that B, that initial segment from A to B, those other three segments here, these three, do always stay the same. I can rotate this point around. I can make it really big. I can shrink it in small, and they always stay the same. All right. But what about a quadrilateral? Can I do the same thing? to make some sort of quadrilateral or a square. Um, I want it to have equal length around the outside. So I'm going to actually start with a segment. I'm not going to measure anything yet. I'm going to start with a segment like I did last time. And I'm going to label my initial points there. So this one should be C and D. And now I need to figure out how much I'm going to rotate it. So just like last time, we said we we're going to take B and stop three times. This time, since we're making quadrilateral, I'm going to stop four times. I go from D 360 degrees around, back to D, stopping four times. So I'm going to do 360 and divided by four, which gives me 90. Alright, bring that over here so we can keep track of it. So I'm going to select my segment there. I'm going to mark my center. Nope. If I want this one to be the center instead, I can just double click it and that should work. And then I'm going to rotate 90 degrees. And then I'm going to rotate the same thing again, 90 degrees. And one more time gives me those four points. So I'm going to name my three new ones, D prime, D double prime, and D triple prime. And now, if I wanted to make a quadrilateral, I just need to connect those four points. Those are my four vertices of my quadrilateral. And I'm going to construct the segments. 
and then I'm going to measure the length of those segments, and sure enough, they are all the same. Now, I can do the same test again, where if I grow my initial segment, you can see how they all grow by the same amount. These four segments, three and four, are always going to be the same, no matter how I move things around. I can get confused a little there by clicking them all at the same time. So you can see, no matter how big or small I make that, these four segments are always staying the same, which means that it is, in this case I think we can actually even say that it's a square, but it is a regular quadrilateral. Alright, the last regular quadrilateral we're going to make is a pentagon. So I'm going to start with that segment again, and again the length of the initial segment doesn't matter. I'm going to name it, and can you predict how much I'm going to have to rotate each time by? I'm going to do that 360. This time I'm dividing it by 5, which gives me 72. Alright, get my cursor back, move this back over here. So, each time I rotate this, I'm going to be rotating it by 72. Make sure my center is in the good spot. many things clicked there. There we go. My center. And I'm going to rotate by 72 degrees. I'm going to rotate it again. 72 degrees. Rotate again. That's number four. I'm making a pentagon. So it'll be five times around. Alright, I'm going to name these ones. Prime, F double prime, F triple prime, and F four prime, quadruple prime if you like. Now I'm going to select those points that I just named, because those are going to be the vertices of my pentagon, which we're hoping will be a regular pentagon. So I'm going to construct my segment, and I'm going to measure the length. And sure enough, there we have it again. They are all, in this case, 3.19 centimeters. And if I drag that out, you can see how they always stay the same. So the question though is, why is that the case? Why is it that I can rotate one segment around, connect to those points, and have a regular polygon? Let's look back at the triangle here. I started with this segment. And so I know that these three segments are all the same length. So if I'm looking at this triangle here, I know that I determined this angle to be 120 degrees. I rotated it 120 degrees. I know that this angle is 120 and this angle is 120. So in each of these three triangles, I have a side and then the same angle and then the same side length in all of these. So these three triangles are congruent, which means that the third side also has to be congruent or it also has to be equal. So for the triangle, I hope that makes sense. And then for the quadrilateral, it's the same thing. I started with that segment, and I know that this one has to be the same length because I rotated this segment, and I rotated by the same amount each time. In this case, it was 90 degrees. So I have side, angle, side, side, angle, side, side, angle, side, side, angle, side, which we know makes these four triangles congruent, and this side of each triangle has to also be congruent or equal. So we know that no matter what the initial length was, the outside sides, if you will, are always going to be equal, making it a regular quadrilateral. And to triple check, we can look now at the pentagon that we made. And we know that these five lengths are all the same because they came from the same initial segment. And we rotated so that this angle is always going to be 72 degrees, right? We can also count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. We have five of them. 5 times 72 gives us 365, right? That's how we figured that out. So once again, we have side, angle, side, side, angle, side. So these two sides out here have to be congruent with each other, right? And we can check that for each of these five triangles to find out that indeed 
these outside sides are always congruent. So not only now do you have the skills to make um, regular polygons in Geometry Sketchpad, but I hope that you can also see where those came from and why that idea of congruent triangles was important. So thanks for watching and don't forget to do your homework.